want to preach in our lives. Let's see what Psalm says about priests. Psalm 34, verse 14, says, Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. This is from the New Living Translation. The New King James Version basically rephrases a little bit those words, but it says the same thing. But what struck me when I was sitting in the toilet looking at this verse was the word search for peace. So it got to me, I was like, how is that? How, how is it possible that I have to search for peace? I thought we just evolve into peace. We create peace around us. Boy, was I wrong when I continued to look at this verse and search some more, and God began to speak to me about it. The King James Version, like I said, says, seek peace and pursue it. New Living Translation, work to keep it. King James Version, seek and pursue it. If peace is something that has to be searched, then where can we find it? Where can we find peace? Well, John 16 and 33 was very quickly remind us where. I have told you all this so you may have peace in me. This is Jesus speaking to the apostles. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And once I found that verse, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I found peace. Jesus gave me peace. But it's really not that simple. We have talked here about how to be in a Christian, Christian characteristics, we have talked about different subjects that I believe strongly in the last year or so has been the food that God has wanted us to have in order to understand where he wants to lead this church. Not only this church, but you as an individual. You are the church. You are the temple of God. So every time that he speaks through his speakers, through his prophets, the pastor, he's speaking to each and one of us in our lives. Peace is not something we can see, obviously, or touch or hear. Nevertheless, the scripture says you can search for it. It actually says you can work for it. This is what Paul says to the church of Galatians in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. This is a familiar verse because we all talk about the fruits of the Spirit. But this is when God begins to work. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Joy, love, actually it's first, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. And two key words I highlighted out there and that. Is produced in peace. Jesus said in John, I'll give you peace. Peter says to the church of Galatians, that it's a fruit of the Spirit. So if it's a fruit of the Spirit, then how did Jesus gain it? Well, that's a simple answer. He was the Spirit that got into that flesh of Jesus. That's how he was easy for him to say, I give you peace, because it's in the spirit. That makes sense? And if it's not, then you find me later and we'll talk about it. That's a whole different subject. But David wrote in the Psalms 34, seek peace and work to keep it. The King James, the same verse, seek peace and pursue it. 
You can't work on something unless you're acting upon it. Work is a movement. You have to do something. Pursuing something doesn't mean you're at still. You mean you're seeking, you're moving towards something. There's a motive behind it. So from the scripture, we can clearly understand that peace is not something we have yet. You can have the Holy Ghost, and that's fine. You need it for salvation. That's just part of it. But within the Holy Ghost, you're going to have to learn to grow some fruits. We just read some of them, and one of them was peace. Pastor was talking last week about it's a process. If it's a process, then obviously fruit doesn't grow overnight. So I understand at whatever level you are in the growth with God, one of your fruits should be peace. It could be a large fruit. It could be a small fruit. But still, no matter what your walk is, early or late, in the gospel, you should show fruit. And peace is one of them. I'll tell you more about it here in a minute, why it is important. We all share love. That's probably one of the first feelings we get when we're born. We get mom and dad to hug me, just like Rackley right now being hold with his grandfather's arms. So we feel that affection. We feel that immediately. But that's not peace. That's comfort at that age. And love is comfort at our age as when we grow, too. It's, it's easy to just hug my sister and, and say, I love my sister and my brother. Tolerating my sister is a whole different story. And I even say tolerating brother or sister, whether it is on your family or here at the church, is even easier. But having peace with my brother and with my sister it's got nothing to do with loving them. This is why I wanted you to point the finger at me earlier because I am included on this list. Just because I'm on this stage higher than you right now doesn't mean that it does not apply to me. When God speaks, he speaks to me first. He molds me first. He cuts me first. He tears me first. He hurts me first. Brother Joss, I love you with all my heart. That's not a lie. But I hate your beard. See how simple you go from loving and caring to not in peace with him because I can't put up with his beard? It's that simple, brothers and sisters. And sometimes we miss the point. I'm not trying to insult anybody, for God's sake, I'm not. I'm trying to be as realistic as I can because God was straight. Jesus was straight. If you follow God's words in, on earth, he was kind of harsh sometimes with the things that he said. He called the liar a liar on their face. He called the cheat a cheat on their face. And you would think that's the God of love, that's the Jesus of love, yeah. Because he loved, he spoke the truth. And the truth, just to say out there, that hurts when you hear it. But it's not to put you to the side. It's to just to wake you up and to understand that sometimes the things that we say are not really what we're feeling. And you need to be careful with that. I'll move on. Paul declares to the Galatians that their peace is basically a delivery of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, when you receive the Holy Ghost... Peace is one of the fruits, he just said that, that you must grow in you. It's a process. Pastors talked about that last week. Probably talked about it this week some more. Contrary to popular belief, humans are not peace seekers. We're just not. I don't care if you've gotten in one fight or zero fights, you're not a peace seeker. Let's see what Ephesians Chapter 2 and verse 3 says, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, 
fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That word wrath means extreme anger. You carry anger within you on a daily basis. You just need a trigger in your life to show it. That is it. Therefore, we understand by that verse that by nature we're not peaceful creatures. We need the Holy Spirit. That's why you need it. But you can just say, I have it. Because it has to work that fruit in you, which is peace. At least one of those fruits. Seeking and searching for peace. How do we do that? That's that will, brothers and sisters. We have to have the willing to do that. You can't see the spirit of the Holy Ghost inside of you. You can see the fruit that develops from that Holy Ghost and that spirit. And that's how you know that you have it. Outside speaking in tongues for the first time and then from thereafter. There has to be some growth. We talk about growth here. You have to show love. You have to show peace. You have to show all the others. It has to come out of you. You have to emphasize it. It doesn't matter how well educated you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been coming to this building. It doesn't matter your race. It just doesn't matter. There's some things that are insignificant when the word asks us to develop peace through the Holy Ghost. This is who we are in a nutshell. We are very impatient people. We are very intolerant people. We are always in a hurry to go nowhere. We are incomprehensible people. We're critics all the time. We are unreasonable. Is it beginning to hurt you? We are biased. No matter how you try not to be, you're always going to be biased. You are insulting. I am. I am selfish. I'm a labor maker. Once you start recognizing these adjectives, you can better understand what God is asking us to do. Because by nature, that's who we are. I can name many other uh, adjectives to put out there, but I don't want you to make more uncomfortable than what you already are. Next thing I know, there are going to be rocks thrown at me. I say I call the newborn or the unborn child, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. That's what he said in, in chapter 9 and verse 6, I believe. Let's see what John 14, 27 says. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let be afraid. He can give us peace because, like I said, he is the spirit of God in him. And that's why he delivered peace to us. I'm going to skip through a whole lot of stuff over here because my time is running out. But I'm going to give you a small example. Nowadays, you go to the store and... You don't expect any delays. You go grab two items out of the store. You go to the cash register. And you pay for them. You go home. All right? But all of a sudden, you go to the store this day. You pick up those two articles. And somebody beat you to the only one register that is open. No problem. I stand behind them. But then the person that beat you to the register puts her items or his items in the, in the line. And now all of a sudden you see 
reaching out to a bag. And they're digging in the bag, and they're digging in the bag. And the bag is, if it's something like my wife Carrie, it's pretty deep. And you're digging in the bag, and you're searching in the bag. And your mind starts wondering, what in the world? I need to get out of this store. I need to go home, deliver these goods. And then all of a sudden, you see a little checkbook come out of it. That laugh tells me how already you're feeling, how you're imagining this. Okay, if a person found a checkbook, but now I can't find a pen. And it's just looking around like you lost something. And the register is not used to having a pen nowadays because this is rarely happens. So I don't have one. And they keep looking and looking. More time keeps running and your mind starts building up. And your mind starts already making decisions. And your face starts making changes and gestures you never had before. You never knew you can control before. Finally, find the pen and start writing. But there's no ink coming out. So she finds this little scratchy paper and starts writing, writing, and looking at it, and looking, and looking. It's funny, but what is going through your mind is not. You have to find inner peace in order to share peace. Because it very well could be the other way around. That might be the person that you're hanging a door invitation for the church next Saturday or next weekend. And if you draw a scene of your mouth spills out a comment at that moment, you ruin the salvation for that person. And that's why we need to be careful. It could be anybody. Another simple example is one that happened to me with my mother. Mom loves change. She just loves change. I think I said this here before. She cannot walk through a parking lot without finding a penny and not... She can't bend over to pick it up, but if I'm working with her, she allows me to pick it up for her. She has a little pocket thing she puts all her chains up. She normally, when she's full, she gives it to the missions department. Every penny counts. Long story short, we go to the pharmacy to pick up some medication for her, and guess what? She broke down. I was terrified. That had to count $12 in change while she was just looking at me giggling, and I had a line of two or three people behind me. I was tempted to pay it with my own card. It's easy just to tap the card and go. It's done. But the lesson learned, I had to be patient. I had to be tolerant. I had to develop peace within me to understand. See, God works through different ways when you're out there. And you have to recognize what is he trying to do. And if your fruit of peace has not grown, guess what? Your assignment, your situation next time is going to be one that you're going to have to develop peace. Same thing with patience. Same thing with tolerance. But we're accustomed to that because tolerance and love and, and patience is something we probably deal every day. I feel for you, sister, and the kids at school. I mean, I don't know how you do it. I only got destiny at home, and that's, that's a headache. <laughs> Emotions can crush the spirit if you let them. First to Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 through 24. Brother Eric, you got a mic back there? You don't? I want to take a mic to you because I need you to help me read through this thing. I'll use Brother Eric or Brother whoever comes up because I want you to clearly understand the language that the scripture is talking about. 
And since it's English, my tongue just doesn't get together with some of these words can come out and say the right thing. You can start at verse 9, brother, on 1 Thessalonians. I'm using the King James Version. You can use the New Living Translation. It doesn't matter. Okay, not appointed. I may stop you every now and then, so bear with me. Hopefully we can close this out. God has not appointed us to what? What is the definition of what? Great anger. So if you want to translate that verse with the permission of the Holy Ghost, then you can say that God has not appointed us to great anger. Keep going. Keep going. Edify. It doesn't say hate. It doesn't say not be at peace. It says edify. Who? Who are we going to edify? Keep going, brother. Okay, stop for a second. It's talking about those who minister in the church, those who minister over you. It doesn't say pastor alone. It doesn't say the secretary of treasure. Each and one of us are ministers to each other. If for some reason you see me out of line out there or in here, you are authorized in the Holy Ghost to stop me and correct me. We are our brother's keeper. Contrary to what anybody else says. If we don't watch for each other, then who will? And since we are imperfect and we are by nature of anger, children of anger, children of a great anger, then we might just get out of control sometimes from the highest to the smallest. And I have nobody else, nobody else, but this group of saints right here sitting this morning to police me, to correct me, to direct me, to highlight, brother, you out of line. Because that, in turn, you are interested in my salvation. You are interested in my growth. And if I reject that, then I need to grow. If you think that you in, in your life, you are perfect where you are, you're not. Let me just tell you that right now. You have to learn to be at peace with who you are, with where you're going, with what others are doing. You have to find peace within you. It says work it, seek it. Keep going, brother. Quelch not the spirit. Yours and others. I'm out of time, brother. Keep going. The 
is it. 15 pages later, right on time, I'm going to close this for you. Put the Snoopy file up, brother, if you can, please. Are you this person? I can't be held responsible for what my face does when you talk. Or are you the next person? Next file, brother. That's a mango tree that it was cut all the way to the trunk. I mean, the main tree is gone. Can anybody see that? But it managed, even though it was cut, it managed to grow a one tiny branch. And out of the branch, it has a large fruit. It don't matter where you are in the Holy Ghost. It don't matter where you are with your walk with God. That is what you should look like. There should be fruit growing out of you no matter what hurts or what comes to you. So as you stand with me, the word of God has not been written just so it can sound good. It wasn't written just to make you feel good sometimes. The scripture says it's a blade that cuts both ways. It's going to wound you at some point in your life if you have a Christian life. And we have to learn to grow fruit out of what we hear. Lord, I close this session this morning in prayer. I ask you, Lord, that you look into our hearts. Look into our minds. Help us grow fruit worthy of the Holy Ghost. That we can be at peace with one another. That we can understand, O Lord, that you have met for us to have peace in our lives, in our families, in our daily ways, at work. Help us understand, Lord, that the word is just not words to hurt us, but to help us grow. Bring us back to the next session, Lord, where we will glorify your name. We will magnify your name. We respect you and move of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I dismiss this class, Lord, in your presence. Amen.
you were you are the medicine, the only cure for everything I feel within. Redeeming what was lost and all that could have been. Oh, this is a healing kind of love. You are the truth. 
Join the chorus of heaven tonight. He shall reign forever and ever. Forever. He shall reign forever and ever. Forever. He shall reign 
Put your spirit on this thing. Let your pleasure be known and felt. Hallelujah. Let your pleasure be known and felt on these songs tonight. We desire to make you smile. Just for 15 seconds, just fill this room with worship. Come on. Why don't you lift up your hands and worship right now? 